Hello Abnormal Investigations, hope you all are doing well. Uh, don't forget tomorrow night is going to be our live under the stars for the question and answers, so I hope to see you all there. We're going to start that at about 8.30 p.m. Central Daylight Time. So come on over, join us. We're going to take questions from everybody, hang out with you guys, and interact. I have an encounter today that I think is pretty unique, and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and hop into it, guys. As I gazed at my collection of frames and maps, Mike, I am an avid hiker, and I go all over to hike different mountains, different trails. My trophies are the maps that I get along with the trails that I post on my Facebook, which I am going to keep this anonymous, and I put in plaques and stuff to hang up on my wall. I am also a short story book writer. I write about nature. i am uh, been published in a few field and stream magazines. I hope that you will enjoy this encounter. It's not much of an encounter, but I do believe there is some aspects to this encounter that show we were followed by a cryptid in the Great Rocky Mountains. <clears throat> As I gazed at my collection of frame maps, I couldn't help but feel a sense of pride and adventure. Each map told a story of a trail I'd conquered, a journey through nature's splendor, I loved reliving the memories of those hikes, the thrill of the discovery, and the serenity of the great outdoors. Just then, I received a message from a fellow nature enthusiast, Gerald. He said, and my name is also Mike. Mike, I'm a kindred spirit, he wrote. I too collect maps of the trails I've completed. Let's swap stories and plan a hike together. <clears throat> My heart raced with excitement. I'd finally found someone who shared my passion. We began exchanging tales of our adventures, our favorite trails, and our most memorable moments in nature. Before long, we planned a hike in the nearby mountains. As we hit the trail, our conversation followed like the stream we followed. We shared tips, laughed, and marveled at the beauty around us. As we submitted, Gerald turned to me with a grin. This is what it's all about, isn't it? He said. I nodded, knowing that our shared love of nature and map collecting had forged a long-lasting bond as we gazed out to the breathtaking view. I knew our adventure was only just the beginning. We were headed to the Colorado Rockies, Mike. The Colorado Rockies. One of the most breathtaking ranges in country. I can picture us setting up base camp surrounded by towering peaks, alpine lakes, and the lush forests. The crisp mountain air is invigorating and the sound of the nearby stream provides a soothing background hum. As we settle in, the sun begins to set, casting a warm orange glow over the landscape. We gather around the campfire, swapping stories and sharing laughs as the stars begin to twinkle above. The night air is filled with the sweet scent of pine and the promise of the adventure to come. What's the plan for our next move? Are we tackling a nearby peak, exploring a hidden valley, or simply enjoying the serenity of the mountain oasis? The Rockies have such a much to offer, and I'm eager to explore it all with you. A whistle pierces the mountain air, carrying a friendly tone that hints of a familiar greeting. Our heads turn in unison, scanning the surrounding trees and rocks for the source of the whistle. Suddenly, a figure emerges from the tree line, wearing a worn cowboy hat and a warm smile. Howdy, partners, the stranger calls out, their boots crunching on the gravel as they approach our campsite. Mind if I join you for a cup of that cowboy coffee? We exchange a look and without a word we know we've got a new friend joining our adventure. The whistle it seems was an invitation to share in the camar camaraderie of the mountains. As we pour a cup for our mysterious visitor the stars above seem to twinkle in approval. What's this strangest story? Where will their presence lead us? The night's young and the mountains hold secrets waiting to be uncovered.
Mike, I cannot explain to you how beautiful these Rocky Mountains truly are. Our intrigue sets in. Our new friends tell hints of a mysterious presence lurking in the shadows, pilfering their provisions without being seen. I gaze into the darkness beyond our campfire's warm glow. The Rockies can be unforgiving, and the thought of an unknown entity stalking through the wilderness sends a thrill of excitement mixed with a pinch of fear. That's strange. I say my voice low and thoughtful. Have you noticed any tracks or signs of what might be doing it? Our friend leans in, their eyes scanning the surrounding trees as if searching for an unseen listener. Not a trace. It's as if whatever it is, it's watching us, waiting for the perfect moment to strike, and it takes our food and sometimes even our water, and damn, it even took my Twinkies, he said. Gerald and I exchanged a look, our minds racing with possibilities. A bear, a mountain lion, or something more evil? The night air seems to vibrate with tension, and I can't help but wonder what the darkness holds. I've been down many trails, camped many places. And I've never had anything out of the ordinary happen that I couldn't explain. It's been another animal, Mike. Bill says, Well, I must get back to camp, as he is starting to get tired. As Bill rises to leave, we nod in understanding aware that the darkness can be unforgiving in the mountains. Be careful, Bill. I say my voice laced with concern. If you're being stalked by something, we don't want you to take any risks. Bill nods his eyes, scanning the darkness beyond our campfire. I'll be fine. Thanks for the concern. I'll see you boys in the trail tomorrow. With that, he disappears into the night, leaving us to ponder the mystery he shared. Gerald and I exchange a look, our minds still racing with questions. What could be stalking Bill's campsite? And what does it want? As we settle in for the night, the darkness seems to press in around us, and I can't shake the feeling that we're not alone in these mountains. The fire crackles, casting eerie shadows on the trees, and I drift off to sleep with a sense of unease, wondering what the dawn will bring. Make no mistake, we laid our pistols beside us, our revolvers at the ready. We scanned the surrounding trees before we went to sleep. We were, I guess, somewhat taken in by Bill's story. The silence is palpable out here, Mike. It's heavy with anticipation. We're poised, waiting for any sign of movement, and our sense heightened. The wind whispers through the trees, rustling leaves and snapping twigs, making us jump at every movement, waking us from our barely asleep consciousness state. Suddenly, a faint rustling sound comes from the darkness beyond our campsite. Our hearts race, our fingers tighten around the triggers. We exchange a tense glance, our eyes locked on the darkness. What was that? Gerald whispers, his voice barely audible. I nod, my revolver trained on the sound. Let's go find out. The warmth of the light of the campfire proved to be comforting to leave behind, and yeah, we were a little afraid. We decided on the error and decided to caution, choosing to stay within the fire's golden glow. The darkness beyond seems to press in, but we're safe in our little circle of light. We finish our coffee, the bitter taste of a welcome distraction from the eerie feelings that lurk just beyond our perception. As we settle in for the night again, the fire crackles and spits casting a hypnotic spell over us. Despite the lingering sense of unease, our eyelids grow heavy and we succumb to the exhaustion of the day's hike. The mountains loom above their secrets and mysteries, waiting for the dawn to reveal. We drift off asleep, our revolvers within easy reach, the fire embers dying out into the faint glow that watches over us like a loyal sentinel. The shock of the discovering of our campsite has been rummaged through as we wake in the morning. Our eyes scan the area, taking in the signs of the disturbance. Food packets are torn open, their contents scattered about, the coffee pot is empty. It's ground strewn across the ground, our gear is in disarray, and someone or something has been searching for something. Gerald's eyes meet mine, a mix of anger and concern etched in his face. Looks like we had a visitor last night, he says, and his voice low and even. I nod, my mind racing with possibility. Bill's stories, was it just a tale or was it? I say my hand instinctively reached for my revolver. The forest seems to have grown quieter as if it's holding the breath of anticipation of what's to come. We know we need to move out and to get back out of the trail to find Bill, but first we need to reassess our situation to figure out what is going on here. We ended up going down the trail and we made it out of the woods and out of the mountains with no other encounters. A great ending to our adventure. We emerged from the mountains with a tale to tell. We are both Eagle Scouts, and we plan to tell this story. 
a story of curiosity and survival, Sasquatch, the elusive creature, had shown us that even in the wild, respect and caution can go a long way. <clears throat> um, I can't help, guys, except for whenever I read that, to wonder, did Bigfoot go through their stuff? Or was it Bill and his other mysterious person he was with that never showed up? Let me know in the comments what you think about this one. Was this a cryptid? Or was this somebody trying to blame it on a cryptid? Keep your head on a swivel, guys. The most dangerous things in the woods are not always cryptids. Sometimes they're man. Let me know what you think this one is. Man or beast. And until next time, don't be something's dinner. Mm -hmm.